Welcome back to our channel. Today, we will continue with our political program, which is on politics of Africa and historical antecedents. Good morning to everyone, good afternoon, and good evening, everywhere that you are. You know, as part of our new series, today we will talk on one controversial but charismatic rebel leader in Angola by name Jonas Mahiru Savimbi. Jonas Mahiru Savimbi was born on the 3rd of August 1934. He was a very revered but feared Angolan revolutionary politician and rebel leader who founded and led a national union for the total independence of Angola, UNITA. UNITA waged a guerrilla war against Portuguese colonial rule from 1966 to 1974 and later faced the People's Movement for the Liberation of Angola during the Angolan Civil War. Savimbi, as he was popularly known, was born in Muhungu in Bia province. His father was Lute, a preacher man, of course, of the Protestant Evangelical Congregational Church of Angola. Very devoted Christian he was. Savimbi was educated mainly in Protestant schools, but also attended Roman Catholic schools. He was a mission boy. At the age of 24, he received a scholarship to study in Portugal. He was initially to study medicine, which happened to be the dream of many young people, but he became associated with students from Angola and other Portuguese colonies who were preparing themselves for anti-colonial resistance and had contacts with the clandestine Portuguese Communist Party. Savimbi became a serious activist and in late September 1960, he was asked to give a speech in Kampala, Uganda on behalf of the UDN, a student organization affiliated to the MPLA. Through this, he had the opportunity to meet the likes of Jomo Kenyatta, who urged him to join the UPA after a sterling presentation at the conference. In, 19, in early 1960s, Savimbi sought a leadership position in the MPLA by joining the MPLA youth but he was rebuffed by MPLA and joined forces with the National Liberation Front of Angola in, 19, in 1964. The same year, he conceived the idea of forming the UNITA. Jonas Mahiru Savimbi, looking for support for his new organization, UNITA, went to China for help and was promised arms and military training. Upon returning to Angola in 1966, he launched UNITA and began his career as an anti-Portugal fighter. Following Angola's independence in 1975, Savimbi gradually drew the attention of powerful Chinese and ultimately American policy makers and intellectuals. As trained in China, Savimbi was highly and a highly successful guerrilla fighter, schooled in classic approaches to warfare, including baiting his enemies with multiple military fronts. He is considered one of the most effective guerrilla leaders of the 20th century. He was at a point dealing with China, Soviet Union, and United States. Complementing his military skills, Savimbi also impressed many with his intellectual qualities and spoke several languages fluently, including Portuguese, French, and surprisingly English. Meanwhile, he had never lived in any English-speaking country. He was really an orator. He was a great speaker who often cited classical Western political and societal philosophy. By 1989, UNITA held total control of several limited areas but was able to develop 
significant guerrilla operations everywhere in Angola. At the height of his military successes, in 1989 and 1990, Savimbi was beginning to launch attacks on government and military targets in and around the country's capital, Luanda. In January and February 1990, Savimbi was wounded in armed conflict with Angolan government troops. And in 1994, UNITA signed a new peace accord, but Savimbi declined the vice presidency that was offered to him. He rather preferred to fight from the bush by renewing his fight against the government soldiers in 1998. Savimbi not interested and trusting and not definitely trusting some of his ranks and files, reportedly purged some of those within UNITA, especially those he saw as a threat to his leadership or questioning his strategic course. This included killing of his foreign secretary, Tito Chigunji, and his entire extended family of over 50 people in 1991, though he denied this claim and his involvement totally. Savimbi, after surviving more than a dozen assassination attempts and being reported dead 15 times, Savimbi was killed on the 22nd of February 2002 in a battle with Angolan military troops along a riverbank in the province of Muziko, his birthplace where he was born and the same place that he died. In the firefight, Savimbi sustained 15 gunshot wounds to his head, throat, upper body, and legs. While he returned fire, his wounds proved fatal and was riddled with more bullets and he died almost instantly. Savimbi, who was believed to be mystical and invincible, had his end as he was killed on his feet, than for him to live on his knees. He lived all his life by the gun and died by the gun. His death paved the way for a peace deal in Angola. He lived for war, but died for peace. May he so rest in peace. Please, my friends, kindly subscribe to One Forum News Channel for the best in everything around the world. Thank you so much.